how to make him chase you. Very simply put, and if I can summarize the entire video in one sentence, all you have to do is take a step back. So this often scares people because they feel like if they take a step back in a relationship, they're going to uh, potentially ruin it or the other person's gonna get bored and run away or leave, things like that. Um, remember, as I always say, step one in any relationship or any form of dating is always raw, honest expression. That is step one, right? But here, what we're doing is we're gonna be talking about step two, which is more bespoke conversation and bespoke language. So remember, right, when it comes to dating and relationships, and it comes to connection, human connection and the whole dating dance, it's not only what you say, how you say it, but also what you don't say. Because sometimes when we're with people, it's like things that we hold our tongue about, things that we move away from, they communicate to other people what our values are, sometimes what our other values aren't. And it's very interesting because a lot of people get really upset by this idea because they're like, you know, I thought we have to be honest all the time. I'm like, you have to be honest all the time. But the, the measurement of communication is always whether or not the other person received what you wanted to say, right? If they didn't get what you're trying to say, then more often than not, your communication has failed. And so I'm a massive fan of communication and I'm a massive fan of using space and the way you position yourself with other people. So like, you know, are you spending time with them? Are you not spending time with them? Things like that as a way to communicate. Because at the end of the day, this is about experiences. This is about creating a really good experience with someone because they want to connect with you. And let's ask you this question first of all. Have you ever been on a date with a guy who just would not give you any space afterwards? You know, he's, he chased you. He, he, he probably gave you... Um, he was a bit overbearing, like he gave you some flowers on the first date and you're like, you know, I, I, I don't even know you, why are you doing this for me? Um, it just feels like it's a bit too much, like it's uncalibrated, there's no empathy. It's kind of like he's in love with the idea of future you and not necessarily you. You know, have you ever been in that experience? Uh, I personally have been in that experience in the past myself actually. And, um, but here's the thing to know, like, this, when happens to us, when we really like someone, we can often get ahead of ourselves and we want to like spend every moment with them because we know like how amazing it's going to be. But that person, unless they're doing that with you, they haven't experienced that yet. Remember, this is about experiences. So if they haven't experienced that yet and you're moving, trying to move the relationship forward, then they're not necessarily getting the same... Uh, their same sense of connection that you are. So we have to focus on experiences, right? And so this is when in the past I've often talked about the attraction ratio, where the attraction ratio is you kind of want the guy to like, like you or want the relationship either equal or more than you, because if that's the case, then he's leading the relationship. But if that's the case, right? And if you feel like the ratio is off, so if you're pushing the relationship more than he is, then you gotta take a step back kind of realize that the emotions that you're expressing are not necessarily calibrated to the situation. Maybe because you're excited, you've got these ideas in your head about how the relationship's gonna go, but he's in his world thinking, oh, she's a really cool girl, um, I wanna get to know her more. Like he's often thinking one step, just a bit, like not too much ahead, unless the ratio is completely off and he's like thinking like, oh my God, we're gonna get married and you're like, hey, I just met you, right? Um, this whole idea of the attraction ratio is actually really exciting because when you understand it, you can use it to your advantage because you kind of realize that, you know, we want people to be, have similar empathy to us or similar feelings to us, right? And if that's the case, and if it's not necessarily going the way you want it to go, remember, you can't force love. You can't convince someone, hey, I'm this fun, exciting person. Because at the end of the day, if that's, if you're trying to convince someone, then they're not necessarily connecting with you. They're not experiencing you. And um, I have a random story that I want to tell you uh, from when I was younger, I went on Australian Idol completely. It's a kind of a tangent, but it makes more sense because I see a lot of people do this exact same thing in relationships. And I went on Australian Idol and I had plans like a song that was meant to showcase my voice. And then after that, I had planned something really fun, right? And I'd waited all day. They put us in this tiny white room. I was fucking exhausted. There were no windows, right? And I go and I stand in front of the judges and I sing this first song. And they say, that's it? You spent all day waiting here just to sing that song? And I was like, yes, but I got this amazing new song, the second one, it's gonna be amazing. They're like, well, you should have started with that one. And as harsh as it is, sometimes dating is like that. 
because we're with that person and they're like, I haven't experienced you yet, I don't know who you are. And you're like, just wait until you get to know me, you'll realize how fun I am. And then they're like, oh, I don't know. I haven't experienced that yet. I don't know what you're talking about. And so we kind of want to let the other person lead the relationship just as much as you are. Because if you're feeling like you're pushing it, then most of the time you're actually training that person to just let it be in your hands. Like have you ever been in a situation where um, you feel like you know, you're always the one making the first step? Well, that's how you get them to actually start taking initiative is you take that step back. And if that doesn't work, because again, this is about experiences, right? Then you have to really use your words and communicate. But generally speaking, at the start of a relationship, unless that person is a massive communicator, you know, unless you're a massive communicator, because people have different values, right? Some people really value communication, some people don't. Um, if that person doesn't necessarily value communication as much, this is how you do it. You know, spend less time, text them less, things like that. Things that necessarily help you match who they are and where they're at. Again, this is not about manipulation. This is just about empathy, understanding where they're at and what they need in order to feel love and what they need in order to experience you, you know? So thanks so much for watching this video. If you did like it, make sure to leave a like because if you did, then I like you. And if you don't subscribe, I am going to make the next video, um, it's just gonna be blank. It's just gonna be the backdrop, um, the chair that I'm sitting on, uh, yeah. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.